Mm -hmm. I remember when Ellie Wiesel said, you knew they were closing in, but until that very moment, you weren't sure you're going to make it. That's right. That's exactly right. He was in my barracks, Ellie Wiesel and I. There's another death march from Buchenwald someplace else. So we didn't want to go, so we hid. But on the 10th of April, you could hardly hide because they came in force, getting everybody out. And unfortunately, Ali Wiesel and some of the other people, like myself, uh, were caught. As we're standing in front of the gate and the guards are ready to march us out, the siren goes off. There's an air raid, American airplanes, all day long. And I survive another day. Next morning, by 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, every single guard, the German guards and the Ukrainian guards and the Lithuanian guards and Hungarian all disappeared. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, 1945, April 11th, two American soldiers walked into my barracks. The Messiah just arrived. Mm. Is that the moment that you knew that you would be okay or did it still take you a while to actually realize that you were gonna be okay? I know you moved to America and eventually. when you moved to America, eventually, uh, but what was it like when you found out what really happened? That it wasn't just the people you knew from your town, but six million Jews. And you would see the film and you'd see the bodies. What was that like for you? Well, I've seen the bodies before in real life. I mean, you get the boiled potato every second day. And maybe luckily, sometimes you actually get a bowl of soup of some sort mostly cabbage soup, uh, you realize what's happening, that the objective is to murder every single Jew. And then you try to reestablish life. I was very fortunate because when I got back from to Czechoslovakia after the war, my parents were alive. I hear I am not quite 16 years old and now I don't have to take care of myself. Now my parents will take care of me. But we weren't welcomed back. Many of our neighbors said, oh my God, so many Jews survived. How is that possible? We thought that Adolf Hitler would have done a better job getting over the Jews because he promised us to do that. Oh. So they were living in our houses. They've taken away our businesses. They didn't want us back. And so the only solution was to leave. The problem was that even though we applied to come to the United States in 1939 or 38, uh, we still had to wait. And I got to New York on February 11th, 1947. I was one of the lucky ones. Because there were hundreds of thousands of Jews who had no place to go. We the world was in shock for a while when they saw what had happened because it was there in pictures. As you said, you experienced it in real life, but it was there in pictures and it was all of the concentration camps. But when we say in shock for a while, the fear is that we will forget the story. So I'm going to start uh, again with where I started at the top, that so many people don't realize the real story. And that's why you have this documentary, Never Again. That is so important for everyone to understand about human beings. We can be the most wonderful, and at the same time, we can be the most evil. And it's not something that a person does, but you had entire communities countries. It was sponsored by governments. And that's hard for people to believe right now, but it happened before. It can happen again if we are not vigilant. Absolutely. You're so absolutely right. It didn't begin the first day they decided, oh, we're going to hate the Jews. We're going to burn them. That's not what happened. It really began in the late 19th century already, where politicians and historians and economists began to write about the evil of the Jews absolute fabrications and lies, particularly in Germany. In Germany, the Jews were part and parcel of the economy. They've lived there for centuries. They were neighbors and friends. And through propaganda, through lies, it was possible to take the German people in 1920s and 30s and convince them that the Nazi regime is the way to go. This is where all the problems will be solved. And yea, verily, the Jews are at fault. And therefore, the only solution is to get rid of them somehow. What is it that you hope people truly, truly take to heart when they see this documentary, Never Again? I hope that they listen, they hear, and they internalize the fact that here is a society, a country of 80 some odd million people, the most cultured country and people in the world. 
and convince them of things which are absolutely evil. You can take ordinary people, God-fearing, church-going people, and through propaganda and lies, you can make them murderers, mass murderers. And that is why I hope that people watch this, see what happened once, and once it happens once, it of course can happen again. We can't stand by and do nothing, because there is no such thing as a real bystander. You stand by and evil is taking place, you're part of the problem. We've seen genocide happen since then, oh, and yeah. just because it hasn't made the news doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. So. Irving, thank you very much for keeping that story alive and reminding us of what human beings are capable of, but more so what we're responsible for and what we need to do always. I suspect if something would have been really done from the very beginning, this may not have turned out that way. When you see evil, you should do something. It's easier to stop when it's the first step. When you hear the first time calling one kid another kid, a nasty name. That's when you stop it. Once you have the gas chambers running, it's tough.